Good evening all and welcome to Great Delton. Today is a May update, just a quick update for the work I've been doing at the end of April and the beginning of this month. I've recently started a new job which requires me to work 4 on 4 off, so time has been a little bit more limited but nonetheless the layout has progressed forward and here's what I've done. A majority of the scope of the work has been on the town scene but now that is finished. If you watch my previous town video you'll see how I've finished that but it's all a uh, it's all done now. I've had a quite a good practice with scratch building and there's been a lot of details which I've quite enjoyed adding. But that looks very good now and that's all finished. If you've been following the channel then you'll also notice that I've uh, super elevated the tracks going from the station entrance there all the way around to the countryside tunnel entrance. The way I've done that is I've just used card and I've slotted it under the tracks as and where I've needed to. It's thicker on the bends and then as it eases into the straights I've just used single pieces of card. And that's come out quite well as you might have uh, guessed from the opening intro of the 350 departing platform 2. It's quite noticeable at ground level as well. The reason for me wanting to super elevate the track was because a lot of Modern railways these days have them because trains travel at higher speeds and therefore to compensate for the speed and any force to the passengers the tracks are at a slight angle therefore allowing the trains to run smoother and faster without any derailments. So I thought I'd mimic that on my layout and as a, if you watch the super elevated track testing video and the running session 4 you'll see it gets some quite good shots there too. There has also been some new additions to Great Delton's stock range, the first of which are these eight container wagons which I got second hand from someone on the Facebook marketplace. They've had a go at weathering themselves with some weathering powders but I might keep it on there, I might just clean it up a little bit to make it look a bit neater. That brings my total rake up to 20 which is above target but I got all eight of these for a good price so I'm quite happy with that. The only problem I find with them is they uncouple a lot mainly due to the NEM couplings so something I will invest in in the future is the Hunt magnetic couplings I've heard quite good reviews about them and hopefully they'll do a job of keeping it coupled because it's very frustrating next we have the Graham Farish MBA open wagons in EWS livery and they are weathered I had six of these and I've bought six more taking my rake up to 12 I think a complete rake for me would either be 16 or 18 of these they are a little bit old for my layout, but I do like running them behind either the 60, which I've recently purchased, or the 66. So I bought six more of these from Rails of Sheffield. They came quite promptly. They are the non-buffered versions, and I may or may not one day fill them with some contents, either some scrap or minerals, maybe even some ballast. Lastly, I have purchased three more EWS 46 ton wagons off someone on Facebook as these are a discontinued product by Graham Farish. I wanted to buy them weathered but the only ones I could find were someone selling them that were not weathered so at the minute I've got some quite clean looking wagons. Maybe they'll be weathered in the future with an airbrush but you can tell the difference between the weathered and the non weathered versions. At the minute I now have seven I'd like ideally 25 or 30 of these. During the track elevation process I also sorted out all the warping that was caused by the recent heat to the tracks. Some of it involved just making the radiuses slightly broader to allow for the expansion and then some of it involved cutting down the track a little bit just to allow for room for expansion. But now it's a lot better and there's uh, sweeping curves with no particular sharp turns or any noticeable points. So I'm quite happy with that. The next step now would be to focus on the track detail. I'll be doing that as the next step before I move forward any further with the station. Because I'd like to get all the track detail and ballasting done and then I'll sort of move upwards towards the station. The track details I'll be putting in will be include walkways. I've already started with the trunking and there'll be relay boxes, catch pits, some signalling. I'll also put in some handrails and then I'll be decorating the point motors to disguise them slightly. I'll be creating a separate video entirely about the track details and how I put them down 
and what kits and accessories I use. So that will be coming shortly. Another side project that I will look to in the near future will be layout lighting. Layout lighting for me adds a lot of detail and realism and obviously especially when you've got night scenes it looks a lot better. So the things I will look to light would be the car parks with the lamp posts and then building security lights in the town scene and there will be also some interior lighting in the houses and perhaps the subway and Costa. Over on the branch line station it will be very difficult to light this part because it is actually on an elevated board Therefore it would be difficult to try and route all the wires without interfering with the track and in the tunnel there's also stuck card and wood so it would be difficult to route the cables so I might have to miss lighting out some of that and then I would definitely like to add lighting to this industrial scene down here definitely with the warehouse we'll have some security lights and then the lamp post shouldn't be too difficult at all to add lighting to as they're just on baseboard level Coach lighting is another project I've got in mind. After taking apart some of the HST coaches recently to fit some closer couplings, I realised they all have sockets in for some coach lighting strips, so that will be looked at in the near future. I think interior lighting adds so much to a train, and therefore I would like to fit it on at least a few of my locos and sets. I think that would look pretty decent. So that will pretty much be it for today's update. As I said, it's only a quick update because the majority of the work has gone on the town scene. But I thought I'd give you a quick recap as to what's been going on in May and just to uh, update you all on the progress of the layout elsewhere. I will be taking a short break from the layout of around a month or so. This is due to two main reasons. Number one. With all the scratch building materials, accessories and paints that I've bought for the town scene, along with the new stock, I have spent quite a lot of money recently, so I do need to recoup from that. And the second reason is, the limited amount of time that I get on the hobby, I'm going to devote to finishing an old ship, which I started quite, uh, quite a few years ago, but I never finished it. I believe it's either a revel or an airfix kit, so I'm going to get that finished, and then I hope to be back on the layout either late June or early July time. I do also need to purchase quite a few items to do my track detailing and a large chunk of that sum will be signalling. I need to buy about six or seven signals along with some head signals for a gantry that I plan on putting in. So that will be quite a cost which I'll have to sort of save up for and hopefully purchase within the next month or so. When I was filming the running session I managed to film about five minutes of trains departing, arriving and running through Delton Central to make sort of a rush hour scene which I will be uploading within the next few weeks. I just like to add some sounds in the background to make it seem a bit more realistic. I've added captions to sort of where the trains would be departing to if it were to sit on the west coast main line. That then just creates what it would be like sort of in a 15 minute to 20 minute period at Delton Central. So I'll be uploading that when that's finished. So yeah that'll be it from me today. If you enjoy the content here at Great Delton, I would highly recommend that you check out Western Parkway. Nick at Western Parkway is currently building a large N-gauge layout which is very similar in style to mine in terms of era and stock. I'll drop a link in the description to this video below and I'll highly recommend that you get over there and get subscribed and check out a few of his videos. He's got some good videos regarding techniques for specific things related to N-gauge which I found quite useful. So, yeah, that'll be it for me today. I will be back hopefully soon with a track detail video in the coming months. And like I said, I'll have about a five-minute scene of Great Delton trains departing and arriving. So, goodbye and stay safe.